And now chapter 17 of rules. Chapter 17 begins on page 162, and it's called Not Everything Worth Keeping Has to Be Useful. I opened the door that says Elliot's Antiques, tucked between the two storefronts, and climbed the wide staircase. I love this place. The jumble of old glittery brooches in the glass case, the worn pots and dishes and frayed baskets on the bookshelves. I can't help stopping at the display of old bottles. If I had lots of money, I'd buy that ruby run for my bedroom windowsill. With sunlight shining through, I bet it's beautiful. Can I help you? Elliot stands up behind his desk. His desktop is buried with piles of paper and used books. Elliot is thin and old and always stooped, like he got tired of having to duck his head. So he does it always now. I'm looking for a guitar. I knew I couldn't afford a new one at a department store or music store, and I don't know if I can even afford an Elliot guitar, but I have to find out. He steps away from his desk and over boxes to reach me in the aisle. I have a couple. He adjusts his glasses on his sharp nose. I follow him through the maze of old chairs and tables covered with tools to the instruments. There's a saxophone in an open case looking dull against the black velvet. An organ is pushed against a wall, and next to that are three snare drums stacked one on top of the other. Four guitars rest against the side of the drums. Elliot shows them to me and I can almost afford the cheapest acoustic one. It's scratchy and dusty, which is good news for me. Most places, the price is the price, but sometimes Elliot will take an offer, especially if it's something he's had a long time and would like to get rid of. I show him my money. That's all I have. All right, he says, and I own a guitar. Carrying it down the stairs, I worry that Jason will see me in the parking lot with the guitar, so I race to our car and quickly put it in the back seat. In the waiting room, I take out the words I made. Seagull, wharf, park, sailboat, pathway, bench, together. I made these cards extra special. The picture is detailed and beautiful. I want to remember the good parts of our walk, not the part with me on the ground hiding from Christy, hoping Jason won't notice. When they arrive, Mrs. Morehouse looks to Jason's finger, stabbing his communication book. Don't whatever me, young man. Jason whirs up beside me. Hi, Catherine. Time one, my birthday party. Great, I'll be there. I reach toward an empty pocket with his communication book, in, in his communication book with Siegel. But Jason grabs my arm to stop me. Your brother can come. To your party? David would love to go, but it would be harder for me if he does. I don't know if that's a good idea. He'll want to watch your TV, and he'll not want to know if your cellar door is closed, and okay with me. Jason looks like he means it, so I suggest maybe he could come at the end and have a piece of cake. Jason nods. Your neighbor friend can come too. I'm sure Christy's busy with Ryan on Saturday, but thanks for inviting her. I showed him my cards. Look, I made you words from the park. Awesome, he smiles. Mom bought a new book for more words. I put Seagull in a pocket. That's good because you're almost out of room in this one. In fact, by the time I'm done, Together has to go on the final page of his communication book. It sits by itself, a picture of the bench with two people sitting on it. Wear wheelchair. Jason pulls his brows together. I imagined you without it, like in your dream where you can run. Want wheelchair in picture. I just thought, take it out. Jason looks away, frowning. <clears throat> I removed the card. I remembered your dream. I thought you might like that. Is everything all right? Mrs. Morehouse asks. I look over to see her staring at us. Jason, she asks, do you need something? He puts his hand over the wheelchair joystick and whirls through the waiting room, down the corridor. I don't think Jennifer's ready for you, Mrs. Morehouse calls. She usually comes out to get you. I feel everybody looking at me. I slide together under my leg to hide it. Catherine, Mom asks, what happened? Ignoring Mom, I pick up my sketchbook and turn to my rule collection, but I don't know what to write. And that's the end of that chapter.